Fruit, we'll probably get them other places too. Uh, it's called a BME 280. Um, it actually measures absolute barometric pressure, so it's not relative sensor, it actually measures altitude. It has a temperature sensor and a humidity sensor too. It has to have temperature because temperature affects air pressure so much it has to be used internally in the compensation algorithm. So, um, and this basically uh, has a I2C interface, I believe that instead of, yeah, I2C interface. So you can talk directly to it, and you send it little commands, and it gives you back information about the air pressure in whatever units that you want. So I thought, what can I do with this? Well, I can build a weather station and watch the weather, watch the barometric pressure change, but maybe instead I could build like a um, an airspeed indicator. Now, I got some help on this. My friend, uh, Barry Frazier, who's a retired uh, Lockheed engineer. The nice thing about Barry is if you call him up and you say, Barry, I'm building an airspeed indicator for my car. I can't figure out how this Bernoulli thing works. Uh, he doesn't say, as you really should, why the hell would you want to do that? He says, I'll have a book on that somewhere. And I, I did some experiments in a Cessna in 1975 on that. So I'll come over and we'll do it. So he helped me a lot with the code. This is the sensor, which you see there, uh, stuck on the front of my car. Barry's suggestion was get it out as far in front of the slipstream as possible. So uh, park carefully when you're when you're wearing this thing. <laughs> and the air flows in the tube, pressurizes a little barometric pressure sensor, and it com the software compares the difference between the pressure in the box from the air flowing in to the pressure ambient pressure in the car. So I actually have two of those little BMP, BME 28s. So um, so I decided I have no real way to calibrate this. So I thought, well, what I'll do is GPS will give you altitude. Um, it's not real good, but it gives you altitude. And um, so what I'll do is I'll, and, and GPS will give you ground speed, uh, which is the same as your airspeed as long as the wind's not blowing. And so I thought I would just drive around the Popka. There actually are hills in a Popka, I was going to be proven that. Um, and just compare the altitude as measured by the barometric pressure sensor to the altitude as measured by the GPS. And they compare pretty well, actually. I mean, I think there's a relatively high correlation there. I don't know what happened on the left of the big drop. I don't know if I fell into a hole, or I think that was a software glitch. But on the left is the altitude uh, over about a 10 minute period of driving around in a circle up and down the hill in the On the right is uh, airspeed versus ground speed. And while my airspeed is systematically too high, the pattern of ups and downs is just about right. The correlation is pretty, pretty good. So with some additional calibration, I believe I could make an effective airspeed indicator. Which would mean I could finally do, when the cop pulls me over, I could say, but officer, I would, my airspeed was only 55, because you see there's this tailwind. I don't think that's gonna work, but, but it's kind of fun. And it's, a, it's interesting, it's a cool, very cool sensor. It's actually, uh, will measure uh, sub-meter resolution, at least meter resolution, but you can move it up and down to the table and see an effect, which is uh, uh, amazing. They're used a lot in drones because it's really hard for altitude hold, because GPS is way too noisy to hold your drone. It's going to bounce, but this is pretty steady. So, and last but not least, I have a short video. I promise you, it's short. Of, uh, of I have to have the road test, right? So this is the road test. You got the the GPS, um, the commercial GPS on the right hand side. You have a meter on the left hand side that is sort of calibrated to read my airspeed uh, from this from the sensor ring. And if we play it, probably got some ugly audio too. Yeah. Like, there we go. So we're doing, you can start to see, we're doing 45-ish there and 45-ish there. Um, and you get the exciting, you know, view down the road. So, uh, there you go. <laughs> and uh, I think this day was raining, was probably some wind too. So I don't know that the, uh, we actually got it. Yeah, now we're going to the wind. And it's about 60 because I'm still only doing 45. Uh, you know, I drive, I'm driving an old man. I only do 45. So the uh, anyway, that's your uh, that's your road test. But basically, uh, so the fun sensor to play with it's really easy to program. There's an Adafruit library that comes with it that knows how to talk to it. Uh, it probably has a lot of commands I'm not using. The hardest thing I did was, which Barry helped me with, was like unit conversion from kilopascals to psi and uh, uh, various unit conversions. Uh, the formula is not too complicated. And uh, the PITO thing uh, just as works as the aircraft, it works. So I don't now I no longer have to worry about uh, reaching stall speed in my car and falling and crashing into a ball of flame. Any questions? Okay, thanks a lot.